We give him praise for his goodness and his greatness. Uh, and there's no, there's no one like him. He has no rival. He has no equal. Glory to God. That, that's enough to shout over right there, beloved. Uh, he has no rival and he has no equal. Amen. Uh, talking about the Lord, there, there's nobody like him. There's nobody like him. I mean, we just give him praise. We thank God for the victory this morning. I just feel like we just should lift our hands before God this morning and, and just give him praise for the victory that we already have in Christ Jesus and, and that it become an experience, experience for us like no other, especially in this season. My God, I, I sense that thing this morning and, and I praise God for all of you being with us. We thank God for the greens. Amen. Being with us. And they're so faithful joining us when we're online. And I, for all of you that are local, we just give God praise for you. And I just want to, I want to be able to convey God's heart to you this morning. Uh, I tell you right now, I, I'm, I'm stirred in my spirit and I'm committed to making sure that you are equipped to fight this good fight of faith. Uh, and uh, I tell you, I'll be seeking the Lord as to the gospel that I will share with you on a daily basis. And I'm committed to doing that until the Holy Spirit tell me something different. Because I believe that we need to be hearing from the throne of heaven every single day that we, that we wake up. We need to be hearing him. And, uh, and so there are lives at stake right now. Amen. Our nation needs the church to be able to get a prayer through. Amen. And if we can't do that, something's awfully wrong. And there's no other hope that the world has except the Lord Jesus Christ working in a body, a lively body. So praise God. I'm going to uh, minimize this. And in, in, in the word of God, I shared with you last week the title of the message, Live, Multiply, Possess. And I came to you out of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. And I just want to read that foundation of Scripture in your hearing. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which, which the Lord swear unto your fathers. He said that you might live, y'all listen to the heart of God, multiply and possess the land, hallelujah, which he swore to our fathers. And, and so I, I dealt last week just on the word live. And I want to read that again in your hearing. Uh, the Hebrew word chaya means to live, to exist, to enjoy life. I like that one, to enjoy life to live anew, to recover, to be well, praise God, praise God. I love that, to be well, to make alive, to quicken, to preserve, to refresh. And I think, I think you will agree with me that, that each of us can find ourselves in the definition of this word live. You know, you might not need to recover anything, but maybe you need something preserved, amen. Maybe you need... You just need to be well in certain things in your life. And, but I, I think all of us can identify with this uh, uh, definition here as God is trying to express to his people that when he's talking about living, he's talking about enjoying life. Not, listen, not trying to survive, but truly thriving. And that's what he's calling us to. And I can't think of a better season than this one, to thrive in the midst of what's going on around us, amen, that we're, we're, that we're dealing with right now. And so that's the heart of God, and I want to continue in this vein to reveal his heart, hallelujah, that, listen, he wants us to live. Why would God create all of these things and then say, I don't want you to enjoy it? Praise God. Amen. He wants his people to enjoy it, but there's a process for God that must be followed, amen, because God is not going to just uh, give us uh, uh, access to touch if we are not in alignment with him. So I thank God even for that prayer uh, uh, to, that we be in alignment 
with what God is doing this morning. Hallelujah. And so uh, I'm going to move on. I'm not going to go over all the other scriptures that I shared last time. I hope you still I wrote them down and still have them. But I ended it out of Deuteronomy. Uh, uh, and then I went to Ezekiel chapter 3. Uh, and I'll read that one, and then I'm going to move on, amen, and, and take you a little bit further. Uh, Ezekiel said, so I opened my mouth, and, the, and he caused me to eat that roll, talking about the scroll, the word of God. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. This word of God will cause us to live and it will bring help to us, each and every one of us. Amen. And we need it. So uh, I, that's why I'm committed to making sure that I listen to the spirit of the Lord as to what to send out to you for your gospel for that day. And so let's move on now in this message. And I want to start out of Luke chapter 12 today. Luke chapter 12, verse 32, to build upon the message, live, multiply, and possess. Now listen to this, beloved. My God, this thing shook me uh, as I read this this morning, as the Holy Spirit stirred me with it. Fear not, little flock, for it is, it should be, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Let me correct that. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Please hold on to that for a minute. Let me read that in another version, the Weiss translation of the Bible. And it says, Stop fearing, little flock, because your father chose, hallelujah, to give you the kingdom. He chose to give you the kingdom. Now, now, now let me stop right there, beloved. I gotta, I gotta peel the onion back on this just a little bit. Now here the father's heart is revealed. Remember he, we talked about last week about living. Now he's talking about, I'm taking you further into this realm of multiplying. And here we see that it's the father's pleasure to give us the kingdom. Now, let me draw on this for a minute. We are still struggling with the fact that is that God might want to give us money for our light bill, that God might want to give us money for our house payment. We're still struggling with that mentality. And here we find God's heart is not just to give you a light bill, not just to give you, amen, money for your food, but God's intent is to give you the entire kingdom, hallelujah. And the entire kingdom, there is no lack, praise God. We're struggling with the, with the minuscule things that we have to deal with in this life. And God's saying, what? I want to give you the kingdom. I want you to increase so that you have access to everything in the kingdom. We have to change our mindset that it's his desire for us to live, but to enjoy life. He said, I want you to enjoy life. And to do that, it's my pleasure to give you access to the kingdom. Everything that I possess, everything that's in my hand, it is my desire to put in yours. Praise God. Can you receive that this morning? Amen. Let's get past whether I'm going to have money this week. Let's get past whether I'm going to have gas this week. No, no, no. I'm telling you today, it's his pleasure to give you the entire kingdom. Hallelujah. But I, as I mentioned, there's a process. But I want you to know the heart of God. You remember what he said in Jeremiah uh, uh, 29 and 11. What did he say? He said, listen, my heart is to give you an expected end. I want to prosper you. I want to see you live and multiply. God has never been a God to say, I want you to just live a little while and barely making it. No, no, God is not, listen, he's not satisfied 
when his people are surviving and not thriving. I'm, I'm going to keep repeating that in our hearing. He's not satisfied because why? He has promised Abraham, glory to God, that we're going to what? expand, that we're going to increase, that we're going to multiply and be as the, listen, as the sand on the seashore. He said, you're going to multiply. That's a promise that God made to Abraham that he's wanting to fulfill. He's wanting to fulfill that in you and me today. Can you receive that? Can you get above this mentality and the thinking that I'm just going to have enough when God's intent is that you be the supplier to somebody else's life. Glory to God. I'm telling you right now, when I go out now, I go out to, when I leave the house, I'm saying, okay, God, who are you leading me to, Lord, who, where, who, where I can cause them to increase to have their need met today? I look for those opportunities, beloved. Why? Because my mentality is going beyond surviving anymore. Oh, my God, I receive the word of the Lord that I will thrive and that I will always, if I've got, listen, if I needed $5 for myself, I know I'm going to have 20 because I'm going to have above and beyond to put in somebody else's hand. Hallelujah. Can y'all receive that today? My God, my God, you need to declare over your own life that Lord, I refuse to survive anymore. Oh. I accept the word of the Lord of the most high God that I'm going to thrive in every situation and I'll never be without. My God, hallelujah. I, I'm excited about this thing, beloved, because there was a time when I didn't go out and look to see who I could increase. You've got to be increased yourself so that you can do this. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Glory my God, saints of God, I'm, I'm excited this morning. Amen. Amen. God. Amen, Sister Barnes and Sister Harold. I, I receive it. Amen, Pastor Tanya. Amen. Can y'all, you know, I'm looking at your comments and I praise God for that. Yeah. Yes. He said, it is my desire to give you the kingdom. Oh, God, if we can embrace that and change our attitude to know that, my God, I'll never go without another day of my life. Why? Because God wants to get some glory. He wants to get some glory. And to do that, he wants to use you and I to increase someone else. Hallelujah. And to do that, like I said last time, I need more than one biscuit. Come on, somebody. I need more than one biscuit. And, and Brother Vic said, listen, listen, that bread by itself is all right, but put some meat in there. I need something else. I need to be increased. And I believe every single day that because I now believe what he's telling me, that I'm going to increase somebody. I'm going to run against, I'm going to run into someone to increase. I look, I look yeah. for it, beloved, where I didn't do that before. But now I'm understanding with greater clarity who I am and what, what he wants me to do. Y'all remember the word I shared with you uh, uh, when, when Jesus was going into, he, he, told, us, he told the disciples, go and, 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 and secure me a spot in the Samaritan village. And they, they snuffed at him. They turned their nose up at him. And James and John said, let's call down fire on him. He said, and, and, and Jesus turned and rebuked them. He said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are made of. You are born of glory to God. He said, he said, the son of man didn't come to destroy men's lives. Why? I come to increase them. I come to make life better for them. I come to save them. Glory to God. When you go out, you are an extension of the Lord Jesus Christ. You didn't come. Listen, you're not going out as a representative of Christ to destroy men's lives, you're going to make it better. Glory to God. And that's the attitude you have to have every single day that I'm going out this morning, God, as your representative, and I'm going to make somebody's life better. I'm going to, I'm going to what? I'm going to cause them to enjoy life a little bit more today. That's the, that's the responsibility that's on every believer that will receive the word of God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. He said, stop fearing. I like that translation, stop fearing. Because he chose, he chose us. He leveled the playing field. He, listen, what did he do? He tore down the spirit of arrogance and self-sufficiency. He said, no, I chose you. You didn't have any ability to choose me. I chose you. And I chose you to represent me. And to do that, I give you the kingdom. It, that reminds me, I don't know how many of you know it, and maybe I'm showing my age on it, but there was a movie called Instinct, I believe it was. Cuba G Gooding Jr. played it, uh, and Anthony Hopkins, I believe, was the other actor. And this, this man went out into the wild, and he, he started living in the wild with the gorillas. I don't know how many of y'all remember that. And in so doing, they end up one day capturing the, the, the silverback and they put him in a cage and they put him in a cage for so long. When Anthony Hopkins opened the cage, Kubi Good Jr. tried to stop him. He said, no, watch, just watch. He opened the cage and the gorilla looked at him and didn't move. And he said, you see, he'd been caged so long to where even freedom is just a dream. He don't even believe it when it's there. We have lived barely making it some time or, or, or one week is different than the other or we become so content like the gorilla with living in that cage we become so content with having to wait next week to have the need met today to where when it's right before us, when we hear a word like this saying God is God to God, it becomes a kingdom, it becomes only a dream to us. Beloved, I tell you, it, this is the reality of God's heart. And there's never been a time like this one for God to now multiply you, increase you, hallelujah. Make sure that when the world looks at you, they have, they have, they have the thought like, how are, how are they making it so? So much so to where they want to come and they want to get to know the God you serve. Live and multiply. That's God's heart. That's his will. Can you accept the will of God today? Amen. Can you accept Amen. that? Love? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be a blessing. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Minister Pam said, truth upon truth. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm getting a little feedback. There. Praise God. If thanks to God. Uh, this this is the time, this is the season for us to walk in this thing. Amen. We got to walk in it. I can't make you walk in it. You have to just know the heart of God is to give the kingdom to you. Not to give you just $120 for your light bill or water bill, gas bill. It is his desire to prosper you, to multiply you, to increase you, to cause you to thrive. That's the, that's the truth I received today. Amen. Let me, let me move on a little bit so I won't hold you too long. Galatians chapter 4. Now, here's, here's the process that we got to understand. Galatians chapter 4. Verse one, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until, mark that word until, until the time appointed. 
And I don't think I, I want to read that amplified because I don't think I put it up there. I want to read it in your hearing. Hallelujah. In the amplified version, it reads thus. Now, what I mean is that as long as the inheritor, the heir, is a child and under age, he does not differ from a slave, although he is the master of all the estate, but he is under guardians and administrators or trustees until the date fixed by the, his father. What is his father waiting on? Waiting on the perfect time. Now, y'all, please hear me now. I said that was a process. It is God's heart to give us the kingdom. But here we find that there's a process to this thing. And as long as you and I are immature, and I'm talking spiritually now, as long as we have not grown up, all the wealth of the kingdom is in somebody else's hand. Remember now he says, the process is to live, multiply, and possess. If I'm not growing, if I'm not growing up, then I'm not really truly going to get into this realm of possession. The kingdom belongs to me. Why? Because I'm an heir to it. I don't just want to live on this side of heaven and never possess this thing. So I've got to deal with this realm of growing up. How many of you know, beloved, somebody in your circle, maybe not your children, but somebody else's children, that they just seem to never want to grow up? And as long as they have a heart to never want to grow up, you know that there's only certain limitations. There's limitations you must put on them because you can't entrust them with everything, even though it is your desire to do so. But as long as they choose not to grow up, you know how it is. When we look at our own children, there are certain ones in our own children that seem to mature a little bit, a little bit quicker than others. And so, when it comes to doing certain things, you can't entrust the one that has chosen or hadn't matured yet. God wants you to understand his heart, that it is his desire to give you the kingdom. But he says, as long as you are a child and you're not doing those things, you're not submitting to his hand enough to grow up, then you can't get to this realm of possession. Hallelujah. He wants us to grow up now because his end goal is, going back to Deuteronomy 8, he said the end goal is that you possess the land. Hallelujah. But he says, I got to grow you a little at a time. I can't just let you go into this thing uh, and you hadn't matured yet. You haven't increased. And let me show you this principle. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23. Hallelujah. Thank God for your comments this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless y'all. Praise God. Live. Tell yourself, I'm going to live, I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to possess. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to preach that to your own soul this morning. Here's the principle. I'm, I'm going to try to end it with this. In verse 28, hallelujah. You can see I get to type it so much up. Verse 302. He says, and I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite, from before thee. Please hear me, beloved. Glory be to God. It's God's desire to drive out the adversary from the land. And I say to you this morning, if you can receive this, whatever person or obstacles that are in your way, it is God's desire to remove them. But I want you to understand God's process. He cannot remove them if you are not ready for them to be removed. Oh, y'all missed a good place to shout there. So you mean to tell me, Pastor, that the reason why they are still there is because I'm not ready for them to be gone? Yes. That's what I'm saying to you. 
Because if God moves them too soon and you are not, listen, y'all please hear me. There are people holding positions that belong to you and that God can't move them because you are not ready. You have not increased enough. Mmm, Mr. Good Place to shout right there. Glory be to God. Y'all gonna this here's a principle in this. Have y'all ever put in for different promotions and stuff, and you know you were you figure in your own mind you were ready, you were qualified, and they give it to someone that seemed to be less qualified than you? <laughs> Glory be to God. God said, I'm going to drive them out. That's my intent. But look, look at this, beloved. Look at this next verse. Hallelujah. Let me go here. He said, listen now, I will not drive them out from before the end one year, lest the land become desolate. And the beast of the field multiply against you. What is God saying? God said, if I drive them out, out of the land right now before you read it, before you've increased enough to be able to maintain it, the land would just become desolate and it would be filled with the beast and they will ruin the land. So God said, no, glory to God, hallelujah, I feel that thing. God said, there are things in your life that need to be moved, but I cannot move them because you're not ready and I will not do that to destroy what I have in my heart to give to you. I will hold on to it until you are committed enough to me in living a life in private before me so that I can then, when you are ready and increased enough, I can move the enemy out of the way. Glory to God. But God will not do it until we increase enough. He said, "What?" now here he was talking to them about physical multiplication, physically increasing in number. He said, if I drive them out right now, there'd be no one to take care of the land. But make no mistake about it, God said, it is my heart's desire to move them out because this land belongs to the people I chose to give it to, to bless them with. There is finances out here for each of us that God said that it belongs to you. Come on, didn't he say the wealth is laid up for us? But if I'm not ready for it, maybe maybe I'm still arrogant in my thinking and the thinking that everything that God sends through my hand is only for me, and I don't have an understanding that God wants me to increase someone else. Well, as, if, as long as I have that attitude, God will not release it to me. Because why? I'm not grown up enough yet. Glory be to God. Can y'all receive this thing this morning? Amen. Amen. God wants to bless folks. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I love it. I love this thing this morning. I trust God. I like that, Pastor Tanya. I trust God's process. I trust his process, beloved. He wants us, the bookend is live and possess, but in the middle is that multiply. This is where it costs the believer truly because there must be an attitude of humility. It must be an attitude that I'm going to be committed to studying the word of God, to praying that I'm going to, I'm going to practice what God speaks about in my private life. What he said, so that in my, if I'm, if I'm walking before him in private, he can then what show forth, this thing in public. He could increase me in the public's view. Hallelujah. He said, but I'm not going to do this in one year. I've got to make sure you're ready for it. Hallelujah. And then he goes on to say, uh, let me go on to the next verse. Glory to God. He said, listen, what, how are you going to do this? By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until what? Thou be increased and inherit the land. God said, I'll do it little by little. Listen, the, the enemy being driven out is commensurate with how much I grow. Can y'all catch that? Y'all catch that right there? He, 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 the enemy being driven out is commensurate or, or is, is equal to how much I grow up in God. Hallelujah. 
The more I grow up in God, the more of the enemy he moves out of the way. But if I'm not growing in God, the enemy will stay right there. If I want him to move, grow up, multiply, increase. That's God's desire for you. Why? Listen to this. He says, see, our mentality must change. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Listen, if, if I only think about close-knit to me, I'm not thinking generationally. And he says, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Little by little, he'll release it as I continue to increase. As I continue to grow up in him, I'll come into this realm of possession. But possessing is to make sure I am a channel for God. Amen? Let me stop here. Glory be to God. Can y'all receive that this morning? Amen. God wants to increase you, but he cannot do that. Uh, if I'm not being obedient to his will, he wants, uh, he wants me to possess. He wants you to possess. He wants us to have so that the world can see how much he truly blesses us. Yes. But God cannot do that, beloved, until you and I increase. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can, can you receive that this morning? Can all of y'all receive that this morning? Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking in your eyes. I'm trying to see the light in you this morning. Yes, all right. Come on. Come on. And so, beloved, I want you to think about this. I want you to meditate on this because it is your father's good pleasure to not give you a house note. It is his pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Live, multiply, and possess. Amen. That's God's will. Amen. That's his will, beloved. So I'm going to stop right there.